All right, today we're going to be talking about debugging tools in Xcode. So in any integrated development environment, we have some tools available at our disposal to write code, to refactor code, and then also to figure out what's wrong with our code if something isn't working as expected. Today, we're going to see how we would tell if something isn't working as expected and why in the Xcode editor for an iOS app. The iOS app that I'm going to be using for this is called Fruit Split, and I'll run it again here for you. It's going to look very similar to apps that you've developed if you've done list detail apps that called to the internet to get information and then displayed it in the list. So here it is, we have our wait screen, and then some data will appear when it comes down. I'm using an open source API here called Unsplash, which fetches images. And I can search for a specific image. So in this case, I've searched specifically for fruit images, and you can see that when I click on one of these, I go to a detail screen that shows me a photo and some information about the photo as well, the name of the photographer who took it, and the location, as well as a bio. So one of the things about the iOS simulator that can be a little frustrating during development is the length of the feedback loop on making changes to our code and being able to see what that looks like on the simulator because the simulator takes time to boot up and it can be uh, difficult to like navigate through the app to the various things that we're looking at. So the trick that I'm going to employ today to show how to tighten that feedback loop is that I'm not ever going to rerun the simulator as we make changes to the application. I ran it the one time at the beginning of this video, and that's the only time that I'll be running the simulator through the entirety of these demonstrations. All of the changes to the code that we'll be making, we'll be making using the debugging tools. So you'll see that we do not have to rerun the simulator in order to be able to experiment with changes that we're making on iOS apps. That's one way to speed up our development cadence in Xcode when we're doing something on an iOS app. So first, I want to introduce you to the concept of a breakpoint. We have these in most languages and editors, and we have them in Xcode as well. A breakpoint is a point that we can set in our code manually to say that we'd like execution of the code to stop at this specific point for us to look at things. The way that we create a breakpoint in Xcode is that we can go down to a given line of code and we can click just to the left of the line number. That's going to give us this blue rectangle thing with the point on it. And that represents a breakpoint. We can set multiple breakpoints in Xcode at a given time, and we can view those in our breakpoint navigator, which you can get to by hitting Command-8, the key binding, and seeing your breakpoints over here in the left-hand menu. You can also get to this menu by clicking in this bar up above the left-hand menu on the breakpoint, which appears second from the right in the horizontal list at the top. When you hover over it, it says show the breakpoint navigator. So currently we only have one breakpoint. And the way that I would trigger this breakpoint is I would do something in the app that runs the code that reaches this breakpoint. So I have set this breakpoint in the view did load method of my detail view controller. So when I click on one of these cell items, it's going to go to the detail view controller and my breakpoint will be triggered. So now I've clicked on sliced grapefruits and you can see that my breakpoint has been triggered. That's what's indicated by the fact that I have this green bar now below my breakpoint in the code. Now, there are a couple of things that we can do when we're looking at a breakpoint that I want to show you. The first is that we have an outline of the objects currently in memory over here on the left-hand side of the bottom navigation. You can show and hide the bottom navigation by clicking on this button in the upper right-hand corner of Xcode and you want to show it while we're looking at this breakpoint. So here you see at the very top level an object called self. That refers to the view controller whose scope we are currently in. And when you expand it, you can see all of the variables that appear inside of self, inside of the scope of that view controller. 
This gives us the opportunity to go through and look at what we have and what it's been assigned to. So for example, in our detail view controller, we have the image view that displays our image, our name label that displays the name, the username label, location label, and so forth. And as we expand these, we have the opportunity to look at what all of the values associated with that view are set to. We're going to do more with this outline a little bit later. Also, here on the right side at the very bottom, you see a prompt. And the prompt says in parentheses, LLDB. That stands for Low Level Debugger and it gives us an opportunity to interact with our program. An example of how we might interact with our program here would be to use a command like PO, print out self dot name label. So I'm going to print out this object that we currently have access to in scope. I hit enter. And I see I have an optional UI label and I see some information about it. This is one way to format the information about the name label. There's another way to format the information about the name label, which is to type P name label instead of PO. PO self, or rather P self dot name label. So you can compare the results of this command to the results of PO. There's a lot more here. It appears to be more verbose, but I find this to be a little easier to read. I can see that this is a UI view, and I can see all of the attributes on it a little more clearly in this view as well. So I can use a breakpoint to take a look at what objects are in scope for me, and I can also use a breakpoint to print out stuff that's happening. Finally, I can inject a line of code in this interactive console. So what I might want to do, for example, is set the background color of my detail view to some color that isn't the white that it appears as a default. So if I want to inject a line of code like that, I start with the keyword expression, like so. And you can see that Xcode auto completes that for me. And I'll say self dot view dot background color equals green. It's a UI color that is provided for us by iOS. So I'll hit enter on that, and I see that that command ran. Now it's time to move past our breakpoint and see that our line of code got injected. The way that we do this is with this menu right in the middle. Next to our breakpoint button right here, we have a button that looks like a play button, and when you hover over it, it says continue program execution. When we click on this, the breakpoint will be released and the code flow will continue. So I click on that and I see that my code runs and I have this nice green background that I injected with LLDB. 